Welcome to this part 13 of the beginner tutorial series of game development in Unreal Engine 4. Today we will be talking about data tables. So let's get into it. So we're in Unreal Engine and uh, we're using version 4.26 today if you want to follow along. Um, so let's start shortly about data tables. Um, to begin with, data tables are sort of like a database or a spreadsheet. Uh, you can see them as sort of something like Excel, uh, where you can have a lot of information stored in columns and rows. Th this is something very similar to that. Uh, a data table can consist of all kinds of different data, depending on how you build it. And it can be used for a lot of different applications. It is very versatile and it, it is very cool. Um, a data table is read only, so you, you just read the data from it. So you have you have the data already done in runtime and then you access the information in the data table. Uh, some examples of applications for this that you can use it for is, for example, you can have, instead of creating multiple children for a weapon, let's say you have a sword class. Instead of creating a subchild that has uh, is a short sword that has a certain amount of damage on it and has a certain mesh on it or uh, things of that nature, you can instead have just the sword class and then have all the the differing uh, attributes or properties of that sword be represented in a row in a data table. Uh, or you could have it for uh, different races or characters in the game, uh, just as long as they are like identical in in a lot of ways, and the only differing factors are some values that you could individually put uh, in between them to differentiate them among each other. We'll we'll delve into it uh, right now, and and you'll get uh, a feel for it. It'll, it'll be easier to explain that way, I think. So to start off, what we need to do is define a structure. A structure is a grouping of attributes or variables that you use, and you can see it sort of like a structure represents one row in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so each uh, property or, or variable in this structure would represent one column. So if we right click here and we go to blueprints you can see that we have something called structure so we'll call this s underscore for structure of course and we'll call this weapons and we open it up and this is the view that you get presented with so this is all the different attributes that uh, this grouping this row will consist of so for example it can have a name Let's see if we can do this properly name and uh, we'll make some more variables. We'll make another one that says maybe damage. And maybe we choose something like a mesh. So what you can do then is you need to uh, choose uh, types that match these well. So for example, float for damage, uh, a mesh would be something like a static mesh. Something like that could, could be a skeleton mesh also in some cases. But uh, anyway, just for example. So now we have defined our uh, row structure, what it's supposed to look like. And then you can also choose default values. So let's say the default value or the default name is a knife has a base default damage of one and it has the mesh of the cube because we like the cube. So now that we have this created we can go back into the content browser again and now we can right click and instead of uh, going to blueprints we are going to go to the section that's called uh, miscellaneous yes and there you have something called a data table. So the first thing that it will require you to say is 
what is the structure I'm consisting of. And that's why we did the structure first. So we have a structure to choose from here. So you can see we have weapons here. And after we have that selected, we just click OK. And then we get to name the data table. So name it DT for data table underscore and we'll say weapons. And we open it up. So this is the view that you will be presented with. And let's create a row so, so you get a, an example. So this you add rows by clicking the plus sign up here. So uh, the row that we get created here immediately gets a, let's do that so it's more clear. It gets one column that gets uh, an index. This is the key for the table. It is what defines, it needs to be a unique identifier because the key is what is used when you want to retrieve data from this table. So uh, we, we have this new row here and if we double click it, uh, like so, we can say we want a sword, we want it to do two damage and we don't want the cube, we want a, uh, let's see, sphere. And what these properties are, of course, just like made up now. So th these would be real sword meshes and knives and things like that for, for this purpose, right? But um, what we can do with this is we can have all the different weapons, for example, that we wanted to have. So let's add a few more here. We'll add uh, this one, we'll call it a uh, long sword. And it'll have three damage, and it'll be a cylinder. Then we'll go to this one, and we'll say that this one is a axe. It'll have five damage. And it has the squad, the quad pyramid. So now we have saved these different uh, weapon examples. I just realized I might have uh, said th these. This column here, the one that says one, two, three, is not the, the the key. This is a unique identifier, just saying it's an index. Uh, the actual row name here. Sorry, my, my bad. This is the one that is the key that I was talking about earlier. So this is the one that represents a row. So, or represents a value when you want to get it from the table later on. We will be demonstrating that as well. But anyway, uh, these can be renamed. Uh, you can just rename it and you can get a different key. So we can say that this is the sword weapon, just to be super clear that it's uh, the actual key and not the name of the actual item and you can see also down here you'll get a drop down for all the different keys that are available so you can see we have sword weapon euro zero and euro one and these represent these ones as you see so we'll just rename these and say long sword weapon <coughs> and we'll rename this one and call it uh, axe weapon now these these names here are not Great. They're just so I can clarify them between the, the actual name of the weapon and the index or the, the key for the uh, table here to make it clear for you. But uh, you could name this whatever you want. As long as it is unique, it is fine. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's make use of this somehow. So we'll open up a... Let's create a blueprint class. We'll call it an actor and we'll call this a uh, BP underscore weapon test. And we open this up. Now, the way that you interact with a data table is fairly straightforward. Uh, you do something called get data table and you'll get some options here. You can see we can get data table row names. You can also get data table row. There was also another one there, but I don't think we should call them as a string. Not as useful. 
I would say. But anyway, so what this does is, if you were to call this node the get data table rows, you have to specify which data table you're using. So we're using the data table weapons. So the result from this would be an output string, which would be a list or an array of names. And these would represent these keys that we have done here. So it would be sword weapon, long sword weapon and axe weapon. These would be the results that we get from this. What you could do if you already know what you want, so the get data table row, it will actually allow you to pick a specific row that is already created. So we, if we wanted the long sword weapon in this case, for example, then we, we could get that with this node. And the result from doing this would be that we get an out row result. This result will represent the information in the structure we created. So all of this information on this specific row. So if we were to choose the longsword weapon here, we can get the name, which would be longsword, the damage, which would be three, and the mesh, which would be the mesh that we have entered in here. The easy way to see this is to just drag it up here and then type break, and then you get all the content of it. So we could do something like, uh, on begin play, we could print, for example, damage. So since we have a long sword here, and the long sword has been defined to have three damage, then it should be printing out three damage here. So if we put this test class in here, and then play, you can see that it says three up in the top there very quickly. Let me show you again, like that. So <coughs> uh, that is how you get information out of these boxes or these these tables, and it is a uh, a very powerful thing, like I said, because that means you can easily define all the parameters of something you want to have, like for a weapon, for example, and you can uh, just by selecting one of these and have it like an unequipped function or something like that, and then you can drag out all the information and then immediately set all the stats that are on that weapon and then have it populated immediately. Uh, and it can be used for so many things. There are some, some caveats. There, there's, um, for example, you can sort of see it like this, that this structure can contain anything. Well, for most part, anything that you have in your content browser, meaning anything that you have here, so like, uh, uh, models, sounds, uh, textures, images, uh, even classes like uh, blueprints, everything like that can be used in a structure. So we could, for example, say here that, uh, what's a good example? Uh, let's just call it weapon class just to have something named there and then we can go and say that we want to have a blueprint of the type pawn test for example R really poor example but just because we have that so you see here the pawn test and then you can have an object reference or a class reference and this is where it gets a little bit special because what we have in the content folders is the class, the, the, the template, the definition of what an instantiated object would look like. An object reference would be a reference to an actual object in the world. We cannot have object references because this is a read-only uh, database or, or source of information and the objects that are in the world don't actually exist yet for it to reference. That might be a poor way of describing it but just know that things that you put in the world, those things you can't use, but uh, you can use things that are in the content folder. So class reference, for example, we could have, and then we can choose a default here. And if we would have children of pawn test, then we could pick all of those here as well. Maybe we can even, uh, do we 
have any I don't think we've made anything like that unfortunate anyway so that's that's the rule so that means that you can actually have defined things in the structure that are classes as well a usage for this might be imagine that you have um, an inventory system and you have an object in the inventory system that you drop on the floor or out, out of the inventory out into the world you drag it off the inventory basically that object you might want to represent in some inventory systems you would just destroy the object and it would be gone it's like throwing it away but in some other games you would have something like if you drop it from the inventory system you can then pick it up or someone else can pick it up later what you could have defined here is for example you could say what kind of class or mesh or visual representation this object would have in the world so you could when you throw this out into the world you could spawn an object of this class type that you have defined here for example it is very powerful there's a lot of flexibility and room for creativity here and it's it's not just for weapons and races and enemies and things like that either you can use it for something like config if you wanted if you wanted to have uh, different game modes in different levels and you wanted them to have some parameter defined by them like for example you would have one game mode on map one which would say how many seconds you have before you need to get to the exit so you could have a game mode variable that said like an integer for example then on a second game mode you might have number of objects you need to collect before you open up the exit to the third level then you could use the same you could use a structure for the game mode config make a data table and say level one should have 100 as and then it would use that reference and say okay i have 100 seconds to give the player before it needs to complete this level and then you have level two which would say okay five as the value and it would mean the player needs to pick up five items before the exit to the next level opens up the problem there would be that you would have to have some kind of unified structure between the game modes so that they could all make use of the same uh, data because all of these com columns are uh, shared right because of their type so there's a string here all the different objects would need to have a string to describe it which is fine for weapons for example here so that's how that works hopefully that makes it sort of clear how to create a data table and what possible usages it can have uh, in addition to this we will be in later tutorials going through and uh, making use of data tables uh, in a way that might make it even clearer and, and like give a contextual situation where they seem to fit right we will also soon be creating another sort of mini game where we bring a lot of the concepts we have taken so far and bring them together into a holistic uh, idea so we can see all of these different things working together but that's it for now i think hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future in the next video we will be continuing to learn about data storage well and going into data assets and learn a little bit about that that is all for now keep on learning take care